Hello Math 140 students, this is your instructor Cindy Enrique. I'm here to talk about the last section in chapter 10. So we'll start off on page 22 and this is section 10.6, function operations. So we're going to learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions together. So when we have the sum of functions f plus g of x, what that means is that it's adding the two functions f and g together with respect to x. So for example, we have f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 7x plus 3. So we want to find the following. We want to find f plus g of x. So in reality, I'm going to rewrite this as f of x plus my g of x. And for part B, I'm going to rewrite this as well as f of x minus, and I'm going to make sure that I make this very obvious that you are subtracting the entire function g of x. Because a lot of people, when they do the subtraction, they just do it to the first thing that's behind the subtraction, not the entire function. And the last thing I have is f of negative 4 minus g of negative 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and try these problems out. So for part A, I have my f of x plus my g of x. So my f function that I have, that is the 2x plus 1. And it is being added by my g function. That g function is that 7x plus 3. So when I add this together, I'm going to get that this is equal to, well, I can rewrite this as 2x plus 7x plus 1 plus 3. So now I have my 7 plus 2, which is 9x, and I have 1 plus 3, which is a positive 4. So now I can say without a doubt that my f of x plus my g of x is equal to 9x plus 4. So that is going to be my answer for part A. Now for part B, I have f minus g of x. So what does that look like? Well. I know that it's going to be my f function, which is 2x plus 1, and it's minus the entire g function. So that g function was that 7x plus 3. So I just have to remember to distribute that entire negative out in front. So I'm going to have a 2x plus 1, and don't forget that I have this negative that I'm going to distribute inside my parentheses. So I have a negative 7x minus 3. Now, when I simplify this a little bit further, I'm going to rearrange it so that I have 2x minus 7x plus 1 minus 3. So now I can subtract or add these, these together. So 2x minus 7, that would be a negative 5x. And I don't like the way that 5 turned out, so let's do that again. So negative 5x and I have 1 minus 3, that would be a negative 2. So now I have that f minus g of x is equal to my negative 5x minus 2. So that's going to be my final answer. And then for part c, because I don't want to limit myself on space, I guess I'll go ahead and write that down below. So for part c, I have my f minus g of negative 4. So that's really f of negative 4 minus my g of negative 4. So what that tells me is to write my f function and subtract it by my g function and I'm going to go ahead and plug in negative 4 into this function. So I already know something though. I already know that f minus g of x is equal to a negative 5x minus 2. That was from part b above. So because this is true, 
Then to take this a step further, my f minus g of negative 4 just means to plug in a negative 4 inside that parentheses. So inside that parentheses, I'm going to plug in a negative 4. So that way, I'm going to have a negative 5 times negative 4 minus 2. Now I'm going to get that it's equal to a positive 18. So f minus g of negative 4 is equal to a positive 18. Okay? So that's one way of doing it. And of course, in math, there's different ways of doing a problem. But that's just the one that I saw because I already had part B. So I was just able to go ahead and just plug in that negative 4 into that equation that I had. Okay, so now we have some practice problems. So this is, I know, everybody's favorite part, right? So this is where you're going to press pause on your device, whatever you're listening to, and you guys are going to work these problems out on your own, okay? So try to do these by yourself. Press pause. Okay, so I hope you guys try to work this problem out. So for part A, we have h plus k of x. So we just add those two functions together and we get 2x squared minus 5x minus 9. For part B, we have h minus k of x. And so when I subtract the second function, remember we distribute that negative side to everything on the inside. And then when we combine like terms, we get a negative 1x plus 9. Part C is slightly different because we have h plus k of negative 2. But we already had h plus k of x from part a. So this is coming from part a. We already have the general equation. So because we already have the general equation, we just have to plug in that value of negative 2. So once I plug in that value of negative 2 into my general equation, I get positive 9. And so positive 9 ends up becoming my final answer. Okay. Now for the next section, um, just like we can add, subtract, we can also multiply and divide our functions together as well. So multiplying the functions <clears throat> means f of x times g of x. And dividing the functions really means just f of x divided by g of x. So for example, I want to find f of g with respect to x. So for, let's say, part A, I have my f of g with respect to x. That is the first thing that I have here. And so really, this turns into f of x divided by my g of x. So I'm just going to write my f of x on top and my g of x on the bottom. So my f of x, it looks like I have my 9x cubed minus 12x squared plus a 6x. And my g of x down below is just a 3x. So whenever you can, try to simpl simplify as much as possible. So up in the numerator, I can see I have a GCF that GCF is going to be a 3x. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. So I'm left with a 3x squared minus a 4x plus 2. And down at the bottom, I have a 3x. Well, look at that. Because my GCF in the numerator was 3x, and my denominator is 3x, well, it tells me that I can actually cancel those out. So what I'm left with, is I'm going to have this 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 over 1. So I can say that my f divided by g with respect to x is equal to my 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. I don't necessarily need that 1 in the denominator for my final answer. Okay? And we also have our multiplication. So we have f times g of x. So that is what we're trying to find. So, okay, so we have f times g with respect to x. Well, that's the same as saying my function f times 
my function g. So my function f, I have 3x minus 4. It's being multiplied by my g function, which is that x plus 5. So then from here, what I would do, I would go ahead and FOIL this out. So when I FOIL this out, I'm going to have a 3x squared, a positive 15x, a negative 4x, and a negative 20. So 3x squared, and if I have a 15 minus 4, that gives me a positive 11x minus 20. So now I know that f times g with respect to x is equal to my 3x squared plus 11x minus 20. And so that ends up becoming my final answer. And of course, like always, we have some practice problems. So this is where you guys are going to try to work these out on your own. So I want you to press pause and try to figure these out. Okay, press pause. So hopefully you guys had enough time to practice these problems. So for practice problem number one, you are multiplying f of x times g of x. And when I uh, do that, I get a negative 2x squared minus 8x. And for practice problem number two, we are dividing f of x by g of x. And I try to factor and I realized it actually doesn't factor. So there's nothing that's going to be canceling out. So that is going to be your final answer. Okay, well I hope that helps. And that is, yep, that is the end of the lecture. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me. All right, see you next chapter.